All right, you can turn to Psalm 46, 1. Psalm 46. It says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore will not we fear, though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof, Selah, there is a river, the streams whereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy places of the tabernacles of the Most High. God is in the midst of her, she shall not be moved. God shall help her, and that right early. The heathen raged, the kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice, the earth melted. Jehovah Sabaoth is with us, the God of Jacob is our refuge, Selah. Come, behold the works of Jehovah, what desolations he hath made in the earth. He maketh wars to cease unto the end of the earth. He breaketh the bow and cut, cutteth the spear in the sunder. He burneth the chariot in the fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. Jehovah Sabaoth is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Salah. All right, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Yeshua, I just come to you this afternoon and I pray. I pray, Jehovah, that you continue to be with us, Jehovah, that you continue to bless us, that you continue, Jehovah, to give us strength, and you continue to bring us deliverance. I pray you continue to, continue to be our uh, refuge in times of trouble, and I pray you continue to protect us and to guide us and to encourage us and to lead us, Jehovah, through the times that will be ahead of us. And even now, Jehovah, as the battle rages, Jehovah, I pray, Yeshua Mashiach, you fill me and my family with your Ruach Hodesh, with your Holy Spirit. And I pray today you bless this message. I pray you use it and encourage the saints. And I pray that your congregation is strengthened, Jehovah. And I give you praise and glory in thy precious name. Amen, so be it. So, here in Psalm 46, he talks about God or Elohim is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore will not we fear, though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea. Alright? We're not alone in this fight. We're not alone in the battles. In the times of trouble, even when the mountains are carried into the midst of the sea, it says that Jehovah is with us. He's a very present help in trouble. Therefore will not we fear. Right? It's a mitzvah. It's a commandment not to fear. Okay? You don't fear. So if you fear, you're not keeping Torah. Right? You cannot fear anything. If you fear whatsoever the scripture says, Paul says, whatsoever is not a faith is sin. Alright? You're not walking in faith, then you're going to fear. And that's a sin. Jehovah says, don't fear. Alright? When the when the trouble came on the on the Sea of Galilee, alright, the storms came and the wind blew. And Yeshua was sleeping, or okay, and they come and woke him up, and they, and they told him they they said, "Don't you care that we perish?" What did Yeshua say? Why did you fear? Where is your faith? Okay, he told them, "Why did you fear? Where is your faith?" Okay, he had, then he rebukes the wind and the sea, and they were amazed. That he had such authority that even the winds and the sea obeyed him. Okay? Yeshua has all authority in heaven and in earth. And this authority he delegates to his ecclesia. What's an ecclesia? It's his church. Okay? We say church. But it's ecclesia in Greek. They both mean the same thing. His church. 
He died for His bride. Alright? The Ecclesia. He says, do not fear. Psalm 46 speaks of the time of trouble when the mountains are carried into the midst of the sea. It speaks there in verse 5. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her and that right early. What's he talking about? Who's her? Okay. Who's her? It's the church. Psalm 46, 6 speaks of the the nations, the heathen raged. The nations raged. The kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice. The earth melted. Okay. When is this? The neat Psalm 1 1 that why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? Psalm 2. Why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against Jehovah and against his Messiah, saying, Let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. He that sitteth in the heavens shall laugh. Jehovah shall have them in derision. Then shall he speak unto them in his wrath, and vex them in his sore displeasure. Yet have I set my king upon my holy hill of Zion. I will declare the decree. Jehovah has said unto me, Who? Me. Thou art my son. This day have I begotten thee. Speaking of Yeshua. Ask of me, and I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance. Ask, and it shall be given thee. Seek, and you shall find. Ask of me, and I shall give thee the heathen, the nations for thine inheritance, and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. Thou shalt break them with a rod of iron. Thou shalt dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. Be wise, therefore, O ye kings. Be instructed, ye judges of the earth. Serve Jehovah with fear and rejoice with trembling. Kiss the sun. Lest he be angry and ye perish from the way when his wrath is kindled but a little. Blessed are all they that put their trust in him. That put their trust in Yeshua Mashiach. Yehovah. Alright? Turn back to Psalm 46. Look at verse 7. It says, Yehovah Tzaboeth is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Salah. Alright? The God of Jacob is our refuge. He is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Alright? Jehovah Tzaboeth is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Salah. Think about it. Salah. Turn to Romans chapter 8. Jehovah Tzaboeth is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. And look what Apostle Paul says to the ecclesia, to the church. Okay? Let's start in verse... Verse 14. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Okay? You're adopted. You're grafted in. What does it mean to be His son? Okay? When your Heavenly Father sees... His children in trouble. Okay? He's with us. God protects His own. Because you're what? You're in His blessing. You're in His house. You get outside of the Father's house. Where are you going to end up? Beaten? A slave? Taken captive? Broke? Desolate? Living among the swine? 
living in the mud, living in the filth. That's where you'll end up. But if you're in the Father's house, where what do you have? You have the robe. You have the ring. You have authority. You have power. Okay? Listen. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. So if you're fearing, you're in bondage. You're in bondage to the world, to the elements of the world, to the, to the world system, to the devil. Okay? For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with them. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us, shall be revealed. Something's not revealed yet. It shall be revealed. Okay? Remember, we are talking about being hidden in Him. The mountain of God. We're seated in heavenly places in Christ. And ye are dead and your life is now hid with Christ. And when Christ shall appear, then shall we appear with Him in glory. We'll appear with Him. There's a revealing. Alright? For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time, the present time is a time... Not fully in the blessings. There's work to be done. There's things that are still going to go on. Alright? For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. For the earnest expectation of the creature waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of God. This manifestation... Yeshua says, You shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with power and great glory. Where's Yeshua now? Is He exalted totally in the earth now? Is He praised and glorified and worshipped only in the earth now? Hmm? No. No. This world's a mess. And guess what? It's only getting worse. It's getting worse. Before it gets better, it's going to get worse. Listen, there's an earnest expectation of the creature. What's an earnest? It's a deposit. Deposit of what? The Holy Spirit. He sealed us with that seal of promise until the day of redemption. Till the day of of the manifestation of the sons of God. The manifestation, the appearance, the revealing of the sons of God. We start in verse 14. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the children or the sons of God. Alright? For the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who had subjected the same in hope. Because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption. Okay? The new body is uncorruptible. In the glorious liberty of the children of God. For we know that the whole creature groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. Now he's talking about. Now. This present time. For we know that the whole cre creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. It travaileth like a birth pain. Okay? Like pains, it travaileth together until now. And not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves, grown within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to wit, the redemption of our body. 
We're waiting for something. Something's not complete yet. Okay? It's evident. Something's not yet completed. The redemption of our body is not completed because we die. This body is going to die. But the body, when the son of, sons of God are manifest, it's incorruptible. Just like the earthly body is earthly, the heavenly body is heavenly. Okay? You're a new creation. Verse 24, For we are saved by hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, why doth he yet hope for? But if we hope for that we see not, then we do with patience wait for it. We're suffering. We're waiting patiently. We're enduring until the end. Okay? 20, verse 26. Likewise the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. That's the inner man, your, your spirit. It helpeth our infirmities. It maketh intercession with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is in the mind of the spirit because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to His purpose, the ecclesia, the called out assembly, the called out ones. Verse 29, For whom He did foreknow, He also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of His Son, that He might be the firstborn among many brethren. The firstborn. Okay? Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. And whom he called, them he also justified. And whom he justified, them he also glorified. What shall we say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? Psalm 46, verse 7. Jehovah Sabaoth is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Salah. The Apostle Paul, he's telling you the same, same thing. What shall we say then to these things? If God be for us, the God of Jacob, if Jehovah Sabaoth is with us, who can be against us? He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things. Ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifieth. Who does that? We're going to find out shortly. Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? There's someone who lays charge, who accuses, okay? Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather, that is risen again. Who is he who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us? We have such an high priest who is passed into the heavens, okay? Yeshua Mashiach. He maketh intercession for us in the heavens. We have an high priest. You say there's no temple on the earth. There's no high priest after order. Look, listen, we have a high priest. It's Yeshua. You need to be sanctified. You need to have a priest. You have him. Yeshua is your priest. Okay? It's a spiritual house. It's a spiritual offering. It's a spiritual sacrifice. Yeshua says, The Father seeketh such to worship Him in spirit and in truth. Okay? Verse 35, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Okay? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, 
or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword. As it is written, For thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. He quotes Psalms. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through Him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, listen what he lists, that neither death, okay, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, future, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Yeshua, our Lord. Alright? Something's coming. There's a battle coming. But what shall we say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Nothing. All right? Turn to Revelation chapter 17. I'm sorry, Psalm chapter 17. Psalm 17. Verse 8 says, Keep me as the apple of the eye. Hide me under the shadow of thy wings. From the wicked that oppress me, from my deadly enemies who compass me about, they are enclosed in their own fat. With their mouth they speak proudly. They have compassed us in our steps. They have set their eyes bowing down to the earth like as a lion. Who are these people? What are these people? That is greedy of his prey. And as there were a young lion lurking in secret places. Arise, O Jehovah. Disappoint him. Cast him down. Listen to what he says. Arise, O Jehovah. Disappoint him. Cast him down. Deliver my soul from the wicked with thy sword. From men which are thy hand, O Jehovah, from the men of the world which have their portion in this life and whose belly thou fillest with thy hid treasure, they are full of children and leave the rest of their substance to their babes. As for me, I will behold thy face in righteousness. I shall be satisfied when I awake with thy likeness. One thing have I desired of Jehovah, and that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of Jehovah all the days of my life, and to behold the beauty of Jehovah. All right, turn to Revelation chapter 16. Remember these verses. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore will not we fear, though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea. Turn to Revelation chapter 16, verse 17. And the seventh angel poured out his veil into the air. And there came a great voice out of the temple of heaven from the throne, saying, It is done. And there were voices and thunders and lightnings. And there was a great earthquake such as was not since men were upon the earth, so mighty an earthquake and so great. And the great city was divided in three parts, and the cities of the nations fell. And great Babylon came in remembrance before God and to give unto her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of His wrath. Listen to verse 20. And every island fled away, and the mountains were not found. And there fell upon men a great hail out of heaven, every stone about the weight of a talent, about a hundred pounds. And men blasphemed God because of the plague of the hail, for the plague thereof was exceeding great. Look at verse 20. It says, Every 
and every island fled away, and the mountains were not found. Go look at Psalm 46, verse 1 again. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore will not we fear, though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea. And every island fled away, and the mountains were not found. Okay? This is the time of the seventh angel. Okay? This is the time in the future when the seventh angel pours out his veil in, into the air. Okay? And a great voice out of the temple of heaven from the throne saying, It is done. Seven, it's completed. Look at the events earlier. Turn to Revelation chapter 12. Revelation chapter 12, verse 1. says, And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. And she being with child cried, travailing in birth and pain to be delivered. 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 For the creature groaneth for the manifestation of the sons of God. Who is this woman with upon her head with She's clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet. And upon her head are a crown of twelve stars. And she being with the child cried, travailing in birth, birth pain, anguish, and pain to be delivered. we waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. Okay? The earnest expectation of the creature waiteth. For the redemption. Alright? Look at the wonder. Look at that's oh, what's upon her head. A crown of 12 stars. Note the number 12. Okay? We've been studying in the past several months about the 12 stones in the Jordan River. Okay? And the 12 stones that were lifted upon one of every tribe. They took one stone and they carried it out of the Jordan River. And they set it up in Gilgal. Okay? Verse Psalm 46, verse 4, we read, There is a river, the streams whereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. There is a river. Okay? Revelation 16, we read about the throne in the midst of heaven. Okay? We've learned about the city of Jehovah, Mount Zion. Mount Zion, it has 12 foundations, has 12 gates. We've looked at the 12 wells. We've looked at the chief cornerstone. We've looked at Hebrews chapter 8, verse 1 and 2, Yeshua the minister of the sanctuary and of the tabernacle, which Jehovah pitched and not man. Okay? The tabernacle. We've looked at where the stone is laid. It's a place of judgment. Where the stone is laid, it's a place of authority. We've looked at Deuteronomy chapter 27, Mount Ebal. Okay? The plastered stones we've looked at, they took the great stones and they plastered them and they wrote the Torah, the entire Torah, very plainly upon it. We've looked at Mount Gerasim, the Mount of Blessings. Okay? We've looked at Gilgal, which means a rolling or the circuit. We've looked at the prophet Samuel, who judged Israel in a circuit. Where do you think church comes from? They put down the KJV because it says church. It doesn't say ecclesia. Because church comes from cirque. Like a circle. Guess what? If you look at all these verses that I just talked about. These are 
things we've covered the last several months. You get to Samuel, and he rides in the circuit, Bethel and Gilgal and Jared. He goes around in the circuit. Okay? Why are we called the church? It's a circuit. It's a circuit court. It's a circuit. Okay? That's what we are. The church has authority. We're going to cover this shortly. We have ecclesia, we're the, called the ecclesia. We have a circuit court authority. Every church has got authority. Where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am, there in the midst of them. All right? We've looked at Elijah. He set up 12 stones, he made an altar, and he poured the water upon it. And then with his authority, he slew all the prophets of Baal. He slew them all with authority. We've looked at John the Baptist, how he said, And say not within yourselves that we are the children of Abraham. For verily I say unto you that God can of these stones, God is able to raise up children to Abraham. We've looked at Isaiah chapter 8 verse 11. Where it talks about Messiah is a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense to both the houses of Israel. He's a rock of offense. We learn how the scribes and Pharisees, they said, by what authority do you do these things? They asked Yeshua, by what authority do you do these things? Yeshua gave a parable how last of all he sent his son. Okay? Saying, they will reverence my son. And what did they do? They said, come, this is the son. Let us kill him and seize on the inheritance. Talking about how they killed him. How they're trying to steal the kingdom away. Even till today, they don't stop trying to take the kingdom. But they don't know the scripture. Because they're blinded. Because the scripture is clear. They don't have any power nor authority. It's given to his saints to his ecclesia, to his church. Okay? We've looked at 1 Peter 2, 5 many times where it says, Ye also are lively stones, are built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Yeshua Mashiach. Okay? We are as lively stones. We're built up a spiritual house. We've looked at the holy mountain, Mount Zion, the great congregation. We've looked at how we're seated in heavenly places in Christ. We've looked at how we're being, we're hidden. Just like today's verses, God is our refuge and our strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore will not we fear, though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea. Okay? Last Sabbath we learned about being cleansed from all filthiness of the flesh and the spirit. All right, so let's continue. Go to Revelation chapter 12. Let's look at these verses again. And the woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of 12 stars. 12 stars. A foundational doctrine, a foundational truth. You're going to see it. From the beginning to the end. By the time the house is finished. The house we're building is not made with hands. It's not of this building. It's not of this creation. It's not of this catesis. If we're lively stones. And we're built up a spiritual house. And our life is now hid in Christ. In heavenly and seen in heavenly places. It's not seen. What is also not seen is the manifestation of the sons of God. We're not, it's not revealed. It's not, we're not, our bodies have not been redeemed yet. It's still the future, okay? The 12 star, the 12 stones, or the 12 stars here. In verse 2, it says, As she being with child cried, travailing in birth, and pain to be delivered. 
And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns, and seven crowns upon his heads. Go read the book of Daniel. You find the exact same beast. Verse 4, And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven, a third, okay, and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman which was ready to be delivered for to devour her child as soon as it was born. There's many, many things that happen in this verse. Verse 5, And she brought forth a man-child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. And her child was caught up unto God and to His throne. Well, where is Yeshua today? Apostle Stephen, he says, Behold, the Son of God standeth, Son of Man sitteth at, standeth at the, at the right hand of God. This is a fulfilled, but there's also a future here. Look at verse 6. And the woman was fled into the wilderness, where she hath a place prepared of God, that they should feed her there, feed her there a thousand two hundred and three score days. 1,260 days, three and a half years. Where do you find that at? You find that in the book of Daniel. You find that three and a half years. Okay? Exactly. Talking about a future time of three and a half years. Okay? Verse 7. And there was war in heaven. Listen. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels. Okay? It's a war in the heavens. And prevailed not, the Satan prevailed not, neither was their place found anymore in heaven. So Satan and his angels, they're cast down to the earth. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. Okay? He deceiveth the whole world, but now Michael, the archangel, and his angels, they fight. It's, it's called the time that the end is coming for Satan. This is the, the consumption, the co consummation. We're nearing the, the time of restoration of all things. But before Yeshua renews the kingdom, when He drinks again of that cup anew again in the kingdom, there's a time of trouble. Okay? Remember we started off in Psalm 46.1. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore will we not fear, though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea. All right? We read Revelation chapter 16 when every island fl fle fled away and the mountains ceased to exist. All right? So Satan is cast down to the earth. And Satan, which deceived the whole world, he was cast out into the earth and his angels were cast out with him. Okay? Daniel talks about the final beast being partly strong and partly weak. The iron mixed with clay. The iron, which is satanic power, mixed with clay, man's power. That's the final Antichrist kingdom. And I could talk about all the stuff going on today, but I'm not. But if you're, you understand what's going on. You understand what the battle is about to begin. It's already been started. All right? And I heard a loud voice in heaven saying, a loud voice saying in heaven, now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of His Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. Who will lay anything to the charge of God's elect? Who does it? Satan does it. All right? And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of His Christ, His Messiah. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. 
It's what he does. That's why it says, give no place to the devil. Don't have him stand in the court to accuse you of sin. Give him no place. Give him no quarter. Give him no jurisdiction. Give him no power. All right? Verse 11, And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, and by the word of their testimony, the blood defeated the devil. He defeated death. He defeated everything. Jehovah's blood. The blood of the Lamb. You go read the book of Revelation, you're going to see who sits on the throne. How many thrones there are? There's only one throne. And who sits on the throne? Okay? Who is called the Lord Almighty? Who is called Jehovah? Who is called the first and the last? That's what yad Hey vav Hey means. Yah, who is. Ve, who was. vah Hey, who is to come. That's Yeshua's name. And they overcame Him by the blood of the Lamb. And by the word of their testimony, and they love not their lives unto the death. What did Paul say? What can separate us from the love of Christ? Shall life, death or life, right? Tribulation, power, principalities, nor things present, nor things yet to come. Verse 12, Therefore rejoice ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil has come down unto you having great wrath, because he knoweth he, that he hath but a short time. Three and a half years. Verse 13, And when the dragon saw that he was cast unto the earth, he persecuted the woman, okay, which brought forth the man-child. And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle, that she might fly into the wilderness into her place, where she is nourished for a time and a times and a half a time from the face of the serpent. She, her, okay, I want to read, go back to Psalm 46 again. Psalm 46 verse 5 says, God is in the midst of her, she shall not be moved. God shall help her and that right early. The heathen raged, the kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice, the earth melted. Remember, the voice comes out of the temple, okay? Saying, it is done. What's done? Satan's cast out, the clock is started, the veils are starting to be poured out. And what happens here in Revelation 12, I believe, is the manifestation of the sons of God. Go read the book of Daniel chapter 7. He, the Antichrist is going to make war on the saints, but the saints will fight back with authority. They'll have authority. We're going to look at that word and take the kingdom and consume and destroy the devil's kingdoms unto the end. Okay, verse 13 of Revelation 12, And the dragon saw that he was cast unto the earth. He persecuted the woman which brought forth the man-child. Okay, there's coming a persecution. And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle, that she might fly into the wilderness into her place, where she is nourished for a time and times and half a time from the face of the serpent. And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman. Okay? That he might cause her to be carried away with the flood. Okay? Some believe this isn't water. Some believe the flood are peoples. You look at what's going on in Europe. You got millions and millions and millions of Muslims. Satanic Muslims. Dogs. These are the dogs. We talked about a week or two ago. That are attacking Christianity. Their goal is to destroy the church. You have now the Pope himself going against the church. He literally is anti-Christ. Okay? 
What is this flood that Satan's doing? Okay? And the serpent, verse 15, And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman. These people are going to come after us. Hordes and hordes of it. Okay? That he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. And the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened its mouth and swallowed up the flood, which the dragon cast out of his mouth. Okay? If you have a word of interpretation, please stand up, because I don't know what that means. Okay? But all I know is we're helped. Okay? Verse 17. And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed. Okay, it's clear that the Antichrist, go read Revelation 13, he makes war against the saints. He's making war during this time. So what does Jehovah do? When the enemy comes as a flood, what does Jehovah do? He raises a standard against them. He helps his children. He helps his ecclesia. And thou art Peter. And upon this rock will I build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. The manifestation of the sons of God, the children of God, were raised up with power during these times. Okay? He raises us up. The enemy is now stronger, we're stronger, all right? My grace is sufficient for you. My strength is made perfect in weakness. And the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened its mouth and swallowed up the, the flood, which the dragon cast out of his mouth. And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God, the Torah, and have the testimony of Yeshua Mashiach. Satan hates us. Vice versa, right? <laughs> We're going to have battles going on. Revelation 12, 2, and she being with child cried. We read those verses Apostle Paul talks about. The whole creation groaneth and travaileth unto this day, waiting for the adoption to wit the manifestation of the sons of God. Alright? We're fled into the wilderness. It's a place that's prepared specially for the last three and a half years. Just like the Exodus, God took them where? He took them to, he took them to the wilderness. Say, well, they wandered in the wilderness for 40 years. That's right. But the original plan, guys, is this. It was only three and a half years. Moses' ministry would have been three and a half years in the wilderness and you enter the kingdom. What was Yeshua's ministry? It was cut short. Some say it's three and a half, some say it's shorter. I, I say it's three and a half for, for all, all I know. Yeshua was going to bring the kingdom. Now it's come. What does Revelation say? Revelation 12.10 and I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation. What did Yeshua do? What, was, what did Moses come do? Moses came to deliver the saints. They rebelled. They didn't believe. They couldn't enter into His rest. So they wandered for 40 years. Then their children entered in. Okay, Yeshua comes. Now has come salvation. They knew that at the time of their visitation. Yeshua says, Your house is left to you desolate. Not one stone shall be left upon another. If the stones are not set up, they have no more authority. It's given unto the church. Yeshua comes. They don't know the time of their visitation. His three, three and a half years is fulfilled. They didn't receive the kingdom. It's postponed. So now, now has come salvation and strength 
and the kingdom of our God and the power of His Messiah, His Christ. Now it comes. Okay? The great red dragon. Whose symbol is that today? China. Okay? There's war in heaven. Michael and his holy angels, they prevail and they cast down Satan to the earth. There's a big change in Revelation 12.10. And I heard a loud voice in heaven saying, Now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of His Christ. What is this power? It's the ecousia. 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 These are some of the verses where ecousia is used. Turn to 1 John chapter 5. 1 John chapter 5 verse 18 it says we know that whosoever is born of God sinneth not but he that is begotten of God keepeth himself and that the wicked one toucheth him not. The wicked one. This is where, if you're truly saved, you're going to understand that verse. Okay? You sin, and you have an accuser of the brethren. Okay? That accuses you day and night. And when you sin and sin and sin, and you're a so-called child of God... Guess what Jehovah's going to do? You're going to be touched. You're going to be the wicked one who's going to get you. Alright? Keep yourself pure. We know that whosoever is born of God sinneth not. You don't want to sin. Okay? You don't want to. It's not your nature. You're a good tree. Okay? You've been born again. You're cleansing your spirit from all filthiness of the flesh and of the spirit. You're in holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices that are holy and acceptable to God by Yeshua Mashiach. Okay? You're going to not sin. And when you don't sin, guess what? The devil can't touch you. Can't get near you. He don't have authority over you. You have authority over him and his angels, the unclean spirits. You have all authority over them. Even now. Okay, you sure gave it now. <laughs> when the, when the sons of God are manifested, it's going to be different. It's a new level, right? You're going to be fighting face to face. I don't know how it's going to be, right? But whosoever is born of God sinneth not, but he that is begotten of God keepeth himself, and that wicked one toucheth him not. And we know that we are of God, and the whole world lieth in wickedness. And we know that the Son of God is come, and hath given us an understanding that we may know Him that is true, and we are in Him that is true, even in His Son, Yeshua Mashiach. This is the true God and eternal life. Little children, keep yourselves from idols. Amen. All right? Look at verse 19. It says, And we know that we are of God, and the whole world lieth in wickedness. It lieth in wickedness. And Satan is not even cast to the earth yet. When he's cast to the earth, literally it's going to be... It's already getting there. I've already, I already see glimpses of what's coming. It's already here. Alright? This world is insane. You can't, I can't even comprehend it. How terrible and wicked it is. Alright? It lieth in wickedness. Turn to Ephesians chapter 2. Book of Ephesians chapter 2. Let's look at 
at verse 10. For we are His workmanship created in Christ Yeshua unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Wherefore remember that ye being in time past, Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands, that in time past, that at that time, ye were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. Right? But now, things have changed. Turn to 2 Timothy chapter 2. Second Timothy chapter two. Verse twenty three says, But foolish and unlearned questions avoid, knowing that they do gender strife. And the servant of Jehovah must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach, patient, in meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves. If God preventure will grant him them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth, and that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil, who are taken captive by him at his will. Okay? This is the battles with the devil. Turn to first Peter chapter five. First Peter chapter five. Verse 7. But the end of all things is at hand. Be ye therefore sober and watch unto prayer. And above all things, have fervent charity among yourselves, for charity shall cover the multitude of sins. It's not the exact verses that I wanted. All right, let's go on to Acts chapter 26. Acts chapter 26. Look at verse 14. Or verse 12. It says, Wherefore, as I went to Damascus with authority and commission from the chief priests, at midday, O king, I saw in the way a light from heaven above the brightness of the sun shining round about me and them which journeyed with me. And when we were all fallen to the earth, I heard a voice speaking unto me and saying in the Hebrew tongue, Saul, Saul, why per persecutest thou me? It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. And I said, Who art thou, Lord? And he said, I am Yeshua, whom thou persecutest. But rise and stand upon thy feet, for I have appeared unto thee for this purpose, to make thee a minister and a witness, both of these things which thou hast seen, and of those things in which I will appear unto thee. Delivering thee from the people and from the Gentiles unto whom now I send thee to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. Okay? Notice what Yeshua is telling, or Paul's telling what Yeshua told them in the vision on the Damascus. He's saying your purpose is to open their eyes and turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance. That means the kingdom among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. Okay? They're going to be delivered. And if you look back at Revelation chapter 12 verse 10... It says, And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of His Messiah. Okay? The power. You, re you wait. In the day of Pentecost, what did the church do? It waited to be endued with power from on high. This power is ek ekousia. 
Okay? Turn to Romans chapter 16. The church has power. Okay? It has power over darkness. The power of Satan has power over it. Romans chapter 16. Verse 20. says, And the God of peace shall bruise or crush Satan under your feet shortly. The grace of our Lord Yeshua Mashiach be with you. Amen. The God of peace, Yeshua, shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly. In the future time, He's going to crush him under our feet. Alright? These are the verses related to Revelation chapter 12, 10. Alright? Turn to Psalm... I'm sorry, turn to... Revelation chapter 12 again. Revelation chapter 12. Look at verse 9. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil, and Satan which deceiveth the whole world, and he was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. Alright? Now is come the power or the ecclesia. Turn to Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7. Verse 24. It says, Therefore whosoever hear these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock, and the rain descended and the floods came. Notice he talks about the floods. And the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon that house and it fell not. For it was founded upon a rock. Okay, talking about the foundation on upon a rock. And everyone that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended and the floods came. And the winds blew and beat upon that house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. And it came to pass when Yeshua had ended these sayings, the people were astonished at his doctrine, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. The same word, ekousia. Okay? Ekousia. We're coming to the, to the fulfillment of Revelation. All right? And there's going to be spiritual battles. Turn to Matthew chapter 28. By what authority do we these things? Matthew chapter 28 verse 16. It says, Then the eleven disciples went away into Galilee, into a mountain where Yeshua had appointed them. Okay? And when they saw Him, they worshipped Him. But some doubted. And Yeshua came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Okay? Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always. Even unto the end of the world. Amen. If God be for us, who can be against us? Alright? The God of Jacob, Jehovah Tzaboth is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Salah. Behold, I am with you even unto the end of the world. All power, ekousia, is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Okay, it's called the Great Commission. Alright, turn to... Turn to Matthew chapter 
Matthew chapter 10. I'll give you one more example. And we'll give you one more verse. Matthew chapter 10. It says, And when he had called unto him his twelve disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. Okay? We have that authority now. Turn to Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6. We'll close with this. Ephesians 6 verse 10. It says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in Jehovah and in the power of His might. Be strong in the power. You have power over all the power of the enemy, over unclean spirits. You can even heal the sick. Okay? The church had power when it began, but if you look today, what happened? Okay? Where's the power? Where's the authority? Where's the ecclesia that has ecclesia? Okay? Where's the church? Finally, my brethren, be strong in Jehovah. He's talking to the church in Ephesus. And in the power of His might, put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Okay? The schemes. The wiles. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world. And I'm going to tell you something. This world is so dark, and it's so wicked, we don't even know half of it. But guess what? They have no, they have no right to rule and reign. Let me just say this. Any wicked person that's not of Yeshua, that's not ordained of Jehovah, that has committed in crimes in the Torah that's worthy of death, they have no power to even exist. Alright? They don't. They should be removed from office. Okay? And guess what? Trump is actually doing it. That's why he's being attacked. President Trump. Because he's going after how wicked these people are. Alright? And we need to stand up in prayer that Jehovah is Jehovah's will, Yeshua's will is done. Alright? Says he says here, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand, stand therefore having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer. There you go. There's your weapon. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, the Ruach Hodesh, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. And, at, and for me also, and for me, that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in bonds, that thereon I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. Alright? So Psalm 46, one, we began, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore will not we fear, though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea. Alright? Before that happens, we need to be strong in Jehovah and in the power of His might. Alright? And stand with all authority. Alright, let's pray.